What like, color is it? It's baby blue. Baby blue. I I would venture to say that I had it. That that I've had it. They open like the biggest North Gate ever in Costa Mesa, and they have like ten different versions of it. And I'm always drawn to blue. Hence blue light media. Uh, so like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a clear clear bottle. Baby blue uh, sticker and baby blue top. Love that. I'll All definitely right. send it to you. All right, I'm going to have to check that out. Well, Christopher Espinoza, thank you so much for dropping by um, and making the trek down here to talk about, well, for one, talk about you, your journey as an entrepreneur, but also MK1. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Happy Thursday. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty honored to be here and be invited and hopefully, you know, share some information, share a little bit about myself and learn about you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, before we get into any of that, what were you like in high school? Uh, well, that's interesting. Um, I grew up in, in LA and moving around a lot kind mm -hmm. of as a, as a kid, especially schools. Um, so that was one thing, but why I bring that up is because for high school, I moved from, uh, LA to Orange County. Mm. Right. So I went to high school in Irvine Oh, nice. and what that meant for me was like a little bit of culture shock. <laughs> um, you know, I remember like one of the first days of school, one of my first experiences, like someone asked me if I spoke Farsi at the time, <laughs> at the time I didn't even know what that was. Yeah. That that's like the dichotomy between like cities and places and counties. Uh, but all that to say, I was just kind of like, kind of like I am now like a lone wolf because I didn't necessarily relate to everybody. Mm. Uh, but that didn't mean that like I was like alone or anything that like that. It was just more like I did my thing. People knew me. I knew of them. It was yeah. respect, you know. It yeah. was cool. 100%. Which high school did you go to? It's called Beckman High School. Beckman High School. I haven't even heard of that one here. Yeah, it's... Uh, I've heard of, like, Woodbridge. Woodbridge is very close. Yeah, I think a, a lot of my friends... Let me turn this down, actually. A lot of my friends, including my business partner, actually went to Wood, Woodbridge also. I was waiting for you to drop that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's funny, though. My uh, My wife is... Hispanic and when we went to India everybody was trying to speak to her in in Hindi <laughs> and, and you know and uh and even in our family pictures they think that she's like the Indian one I'm like that's kind of weird um but you know she's not <laughs> dude I was just in uh actually it was pretty funny I was just in Paris last uh November and as soon as I got out of the airport there's a line of taxis right mm. and I I don't know exactly where they're from maybe Algerian or some form of north african but i was getting all kinds of languages as i was walking down yeah. to my schedule yeah. pickup and it was just i didn't make it out but it was obviously something to the effect of hey do you need to ride in whatever language yeah. it was and it wasn't french either it was the native tongue whatever they were speaking yeah. so i thought that was funny i need to like go back just real quick and and outline the uh, the fact that i know that indian and hindi is not the same as farsi but she also gets like middle eastern and like all these yeah. things as well um i am <laughs> the ambiguity is exactly the ambiguity is 100 like... percent there for sure that's awesome man so i mean you know we'll definitely get to like mk1 but i want to know when did you start boxing boxing specifically it's hard to answer i think for me um started martial arts when i was really really young uh, six, I want to say, is when I started karate. That was mm -hmm. like the first, the base. And uh, how how that ended up being is like, I was really great at it. I loved it. But um, I took it to school. I'd fight kids. Oh, no. Pretty much beat them up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, what ended up happening there is like, they took away my belt as a form of discipline because I just wouldn't stop fighting kids at school yeah. for fun. And then eventually they took me out. So I just always loved the fighting. I always loved training. Mm -hmm. And um, boxing came in, I would say, and it was all like late 90s. So I think like boxing specifically, I was inspired by like, I'll say De La Hoya back, nice. in, back in his prime, like all those big fights, you know, Mosley, Vargas, et cetera. Um, that kind of spurred it. And then I just started training um, just based off inspiration of, of awesome. that stuff. So yeah. really young. Yeah, that's awesome. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm 30. Awesome. Yeah. So... You know, you didn't start off with the D D to C brand. You didn't start off with like MK one. Can you talk a little bit about the no. path to, to getting there? Um, yeah. So MK one, definitely. I started that like six years ago at this point in June. It's still June, right? Yeah. Um, but congrats on the anniversary. That's <laughs> I appreciate awesome. It. Yeah. It has, it's been a grind and we'll get into that. But, um, how I basically my path is, you know, went to school, did all that thing. Like I told you in high school, I was kind of like a lone wolf. Yeah. I was already out. Like freshman year, I was like looking at college. 
So the first thing I did is I, I just left California. I, I, mm. I made a decision and I went to Texas Tech. I went somewhere that I didn't think anybody would go. That would be completely different. And then strategically, I chose the place that had like D1 sports. It had my major that I was looking for. And I'll, I'll share that right now. And then it was like in a small town where I knew I wouldn't get distracted. Um, so that's one of the best moves I feel like I've ever made personally and really insightful as a kid to like be thinking like that. Uh, but anyway, I got an MIS degree. It's uh, management information systems. It's kind of like a, uh, a mix between business and computer science. So you, oh, take, nice. you take classes from both uh, buildings, um, which I really loved, right? Because I got accounting ex- experience or, you know, knowledge, marketing. I also did the, the CS stuff, databases, all that kind of stuff. So that really set me up for when I came out, of, when I graduated, I had some offers, one in Arkansas, one in Houston. Mm-hmm. When I'm a California guy, I was like, yeah, <laughs> we're going back. Yeah. Um, and I just landed uh, a, uh, what do you call, an internship with an agency, an e-commerce agency, funny enough. Oh. Um, and it sucked, bro, because I think I was thinking <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it was like, I just graduated college. And, you know, back then, I graduated in 2015. Um, but and even to this day, people like speak of college was like the way, you know, it's going to set you up for your future and I guess guarantee you a certain level of success or comfort. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I came back and I took that internship for, I think, $13 an hour. Yeah. And that was super humbling, you know. Yeah. Like having paid all that, did all that time in school, busting my ass and then come back and making $13 an hour. Like what? At an agency too. Agency life is hard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that at the time. I just took whatever I could and... It was tech related, so I was happy with that. Yeah. Um, so I started at that agency. And long story short, I worked at that agency. I want to say like six years, all, like graduating all the way up to the end, where I was managing all the enterprise implementations. Um, and what that means for anybody who doesn't know, an implementation is just beginning to end, start to finish. Um, and then enterprise just indicates the certain level of of company. So we're not talking like mom and pops or even uh, like mid market stuff. I'm talking like. You know, at the end there, I was working with HD Supply, mm. um, Harvard Business Review, and just doing just doing big work, whether it was e-commerce build-outs or integration build-outs. Yeah. And then I went to Salsify, which is, that's a really cool platform, I think. I mean, last time I cared to check, they were valued at over a billion dollars, but... Salsify? Salsify. Mm. They call it, are you familiar with a PIM? Uh, I'm not. So that's a product information management Got uh, it. platform or product information manager and there's what's called a dam are mm. you familiar with that no a dam is a data asset manager so Got these it. are basically systems product information data assets these are big systems that um enterprise companies like the best buys of the world uh, you know targets etc they keep all their their assets in right but you got like one product related one which maybe could have inventory um pricing descriptions titles all like that uh, I'll call it like soft stuff. Yeah, that's not a great word, but call it <laughs> that. And then the, on the data side, they'll have all the creative, like the the promotional banners, the product shots, the videos, the marketing content, and it's just a way for these companies just to manage that. Now, yeah. what Salsify did, this is why they're so powerful, is they took those concepts and they put it together mm. for one. So it's one central place where you have all your product and all your your creative stuff, plus they built outbound integrations to all the biggest uh, like marketplace and, and shop softwares in the world. So you can put all your data in one place. And once you once you have it in there effectively, you can send it out to Amazon, Target, Shopify, Got it. Magento. And basically the, the whole value add is your whole organization can um, access one place to manage things. And it's quicker to go to market uh, right. on each of these various platforms because Salsify all, all built the bridge is outbound. Yeah. Right. That's a big thing. Like, you know, a big brand doesn't just get to go on Amazon or go, you know, build their website. Like there's a lot of work there. So when you kind of focus on the data somewhere like Salsify and you go outbound and they build all those connections, um, that was the big value add. And that's why they're making so much money. How do you, (laughs) do you feel like that type of knowledge is necessary when you are starting your own brand? No, man. I think I think that makes me like a a certain killer in terms of software and SaaS and mm. and just big data and stuff like that. But that's not what you need to win in terms of a DTC, yeah, uh, e-commerce brand. Yeah. How much of that like how much of that knowledge are you using today with MK1? Uh 
I, I use a lot of it actually. Mm. I use a lot of it. And just to wrap, so I went from Salsify to like an app uh, company. It's called Aftership. Yeah. And they do like real time notifications for Aftership your, I'm familiar yeah. with. So um and I got laid off there. <laughs> Who cares? I kinda hate not hate, but I moved away from tech after that. Like yeah. there's there's no passion there. Yeah. But back to your question. Um the specifically the Salsify stuff, it was all data, like at, at the end of the day, right? Um, and then integrations to these different marketplaces and platforms. So where that's useful is um, I just got exposure to what's important in terms of like my product listings. Um, mm. Of course, I was in there all day with huge companies like Best Buy and uh, yeah, they're having like so on and so on it's thousands of SKUs. And, and I it, and I got their strategy on like, okay, how do they structure their their catalogs, mm. what information is important to um, maintain for a certain product to make it sellable um, and stuff like that. And and then optimizing that stuff. So while my business obviously isn't at that scale, there's the learnings and the understandings of what I got to put together to make an effective um, like product on the Internet, right. like for Internet standards. Yeah. Uh, that was powerful. Yeah. And so. You know, it sounds like there was a little bit of overlap when you were starting MK1 um, and essentially maybe when you like jumped ship or maybe got laid off. Uh, when did you actually start MK1? So I started MK1. I was still at the hmm, I was still at the agency. And um, the reason I had started is because I was at that point, I was just building all these e-commerce sites and um I was more focused on implement implementations at the end, but they also had a line of like managed services, which is, you know, you put a, a company on retainer and you're doing work consistently throughout the year, whatever upgrades they need on the yeah. website. But I started it because I, uh, I just, I was working with a lot of dumbass people. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, at the agency or your yeah, clients? No, at the agency, <laughs> my clients, my clients. I got it, got it, got clients. it. Okay. And, and then I, I just was like, hold on. This fucking this moron is like making a shitload of money selling yeah. stuff on the internet. Like, I gotta, you know, yeah, I gotta do this. Like, yeah. if he can do it, I can do it. There's, yeah. there's no way. So it was like a little bit of that, plus just the entrepreneurial spirit of like, I kind of. That's the other end of it is like, I don't really want to work with someone I don't believe in, trust mm. that I don't think is higher than me. And like, I want to learn. You know, I'm I'm trying to like level up. And like, when you're working for for a boss or whatever that you don't think is that that you know to that level or to the standard you feel like it, it's kind of like work feels like work you know yeah. um so just the overall bad taste of like i want to be my own boss and also i see these other idiots doing really yeah. great on the internet right like i got to do something i didn't know what it was going to be but just kind of like the mindset was there i got to do something and i think it's going to be this yeah right how did how did you like land on okay boxing gloves is yeah. or boxing equipment rather because it's so much more than that uh than just gloves like how did you land on that idea so that 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 actually um i was training at king's mma at the time mm -hmm. kickboxing shout out king's Coach <laughs> nolan he's he's a g um but how that worked out and i could tell you like, this is how mk1 started um i was training at the time i had a gear bag and of course i'm going like damn near five days a week mm -hmm. and I need that bag. It's everything to me. Like to make things quick, I I, I took it to a car wash. I washed my or I went to the car wash. I washed my car self wash. Mm -hmm. I had that bag in there. I put it aside, washed my car, and I left. And I left the no. bag. No. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I came back after an hour. Sure enough, it's gone. And I'm like, fuck. I was like, well, I'm training tomorrow. I need some gear. Yeah. So I went on the internet. I just got on my phone, Google, and um, I just started. I forget what I typed exactly, but. Long story short, there is I, I fucking was like I don't like this shit. Like yeah. I don't like the, and I had been training for some years, so I knew specifically like what the materials were. Yeah. And like I, I was like an educated customer, but I was like, these cut. If it's a good glove, these colors are whack, and this dragon on here sucks. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not wearing that to training. Uh, if it's a bad glove, like this price is crazy for what I'm getting yeah. here, and I just felt like this doesn't make sense. I don't like this. I can do better. Yeah. That was like the like the. Like the thought, right? Yeah. But anyway, I bought some shit and I went to training. Boom. Like, and then like a couple months passed. I was probably like in a January, so February. Were the, the were the gloves actually trash when you when you put them on to train? 
No, I ended up going with like Top King, which is mm. a good Muay Thai brand. Got it. Because um, I was kickboxing at the time. But still, I didn't feel great about it. I was just like, fucking, I need something. Yeah. But that that was the trigger, like the thought in like a January or February. Then June came around and like what actually like, or actually, no, this was March. Sorry. Yeah, March. Um, what actually like spurred me like overnight to start MK1 was actually like an event that I thought was pretty crazy, but Nipsey Hussle's death, mm -hmm. right? Um, what's crazy about that is like, he passed away on a Sunday. The Saturday before, my school, Texas Tech, they were in the, the Final Four, I think, against Gonzaga. I went to the game in, in the Honda Center. And that morning, I was just blasting his music. Yeah. Like, nothing else. Just blasting Nipsey Hussle all morning Saturday. And uh, I went to that game. It was a great game. They won. Um, but why I bring that up is because... I was blasting that music to the point where my cousin was like, hey, why are you just playing Nip, nip right now? Yeah. I'm like, bro, this is what I'm feeling today. Yeah. The next day he, he passes away, but he ended up being at that game. Mm. He was at that game. Like, there's pictures. He was supporting this guy named uh, Brandon Francis, who his dad was connected to Nip in some way. Um, so that, Nipsey Hussle was like a super inspiring rapper. Like, I was listening back in Lubbock, and, like, he has a message to his, to his music, right? Yeah. Just all that hustle mentality, yeah. You know, don't quit, etc. And uh, just there was too many things. Plus that thought I had like a month previous that just was like, okay, I got to do it. Fuck yeah. it. Like, here I go. So actually, that Sunday that happened that triggered me. The logo you see today on the website, I actually drew myself, like sketched <laughs> it out on paper. Yeah. I learned how to use Illustrator over the course of like three days. So I sketched it. Learned Illustrator and actually built the logo my damn self. I love that. And I had that ready by Wednesday, and I was like, "Cool, I'm going with this. This is this is what we're doing." And were you still working when you started the, yeah. the business? Yeah, yeah. I was working. It was it was a side hustle to start because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. But I was just at that like that that moment just triggered me. So boom, I started. Yeah. There's yeah. something about learning how to do those little things yourself, like illustrator to do graphic design right yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge believer that like when you're starting your own thing you got to learn how to do everything mm -hmm. to a certain extent right like at one point i took photos for blue light media but like i i didn't take photos like amanda takes photos you know what i mean i just yeah they were terrible <laughs> you got it but you i did it you know it. and it's the experience exactly the graphic design or something because for me it gave me the uh it, it at least gave me some context on how long something could take um, and then a process that, that could work, you know? And understanding that has, I think, has helped me manage the team a little bit, but also like when, if you do want to hire somebody, well, now if you're hiring a graphic designer, you might not be as great of a designer, right. but when somebody says something's going to take like 12 hours and you're like, no, that's not going to take 12 <laughs> hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You, you're not going to get bamboozled the same you, way. You, you, you got to have a little bit of reference to be able to like effectively manage whatever X mm -hmm. thing is. Um, so that, that's, I think what would help me a lot with the uh, e-commerce side of my business is like, bro, I know that shit inside yeah. and out. You're not going to tell me shit. Like, I don't believe there's anybody in the world that can tell me anything related to e-commerce. Right. Oh, I love that. I really truly yeah. don't. And I'm, I'm learning ads now. Yeah. So it's like, I'm, I'm like rounding that ship yeah. and it's like, damn. All yeah. right, here I go. Do you, um, have you heard of a guy can't, called Nick Sharma? Nick Sharma. So he's like the D to C guy. And, um, mm -hmm. if you're getting into ads and all that, like he, he's definitely one of those people. He has this newsletter that honestly, if you just read that newsletter, mm -hmm. you'll get like an MBA in you know, yeah. ads management and stuff. I'll forward it to you because it's really, really good. He's like one of... Please, yeah. I'm yeah. always... That's the thing. Like, I'm talking all this shit, but I, I seek knowledge every day. Exactly. Like, I'm watching yeah. the newest YouTube, small channels, big channels. I'm like my own business. I'm seeing the results of my own tests. Yeah. Like, so it's not like, you know, I just feel like I got to a point and I'm that guy. Like, no, I'm committed to, yeah. to doing what I do here. There's like levels to that, right? Like, tell me about like your balance between confidence and humility. Um. Well, I think the confidence just comes from the work and the experience and and that side of things. And the humility, like I do, I have to remind myself because I just, I just go, man. I just all in, right? Um, but I know that there's always another level. There's, there's things that I absolutely don't know. 
And th that's why I keep coming back to the well in terms of learning and mm. in terms of seeking people that are either doing it or um, even examples. It doesn't have to be a person. Examples of things that I can pull from. Um, so it's just definitely something I, I emphasize on balancing. And um, like while I want to remain confident, I think humility is huge. And I'll say, I'll say a lot of things, right, for sure. Uh, but I just know that um, you got to be humble. You got to take a step back, yeah. and you don't you don't know everything, Chris. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me about like making the jump from like having a job to going full time. Was it a planned out thing or? <laughs> yeah, no. So it was definitely not planned out. I was I was working in tech, man. It was good, um, doing good work. Uh, but honestly. I moved from Salsify to Aftership. Mm -hmm. They hired me on to do implementations. Um, so they plucked me from the big company, right? And um, it was just kind of like it, all the signs were there. Like they almost didn't have work for me. Like, mm -hmm. it, it was it felt experimental. How I would say it is um, the, the path to an implementation wasn't there exactly for the software. So... I was a little bit ahead of kind of where they were in terms of the software. And I think the economy went a certain way or they were kind of like seeing writing on the wall in that capacity. So I just probably was some fat that they needed to trim. Yeah. I didn't appreciate how they did it for me, but I mean, I don't think, you know, yeah. it's no, it's no love in business. Right. Yeah. So no big deal. I got laid off and, and that's really how I went full time. Is this was like, mm. this is all I got, you know? And, and then also at, uh, to be frank, when when I was like side hustling or you know building it up, um, I, it didn't have my full attention, you mm -hmm. know, like yeah. undoubtedly. Um, so, I think to answer your question, yeah, it just was it was a quick cut, yeah, and it wasn't my doing. Um, but once it happened, just got on the horse and it's like, hey, this is what I got. Let me yeah. let me just move forward there. Were you making enough money through MK1 at that time to support your lifestyle or like at least like pay um, rent or whatever? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Absolutely, man. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's um, honestly the uh, like you can't compare like a, a salary job in the tech industry to e-commerce. <laughs> um, so no. MK1. <laughs> and then right. like and then, man, uh, boxing is not it like in terms of you know or combat sports like it's it's a it's a very competitive environment yeah the the this particular niche the customer is very special i'll say yeah um so no man absolutely not it was it was definitely a change definitely a step back but luckily i live pretty reasonably man like honestly like i keep my expenses low and uh, the main thing i like to spend my money on is is experiences i'd say nice. whether yeah. it's traveling yeah. or theme park stuff like that like it's right never never big splurges on anything crazy or like concerts or yeah like that so yeah it was it was um it didn't even feel like a transition and you know what like while i was, I'm, I'm even still making less money um but while i'm making less i'm like way happier my stress is like mm. i don't even have stress anymore you yeah know? like i control my day it's just a total different vibe and i don't even know if i trade it back yeah like for no you know? trust me like you will not how long <laughs> you been, how long have you been full-time now um a year and a what like a year and a half yeah year once you half. get the once you get that the taste of the sweet life like it doesn't matter like it, you, it is sweet man. yeah i'd take i would take i've got you know um i would take I wouldn't trade this for like a 250, 300 that like there's, you'd have to have a really sick setup for me to like, yeah, that's what you I'm know, at. to like come to do that. It's like, okay, cool. Like you can pay me all that money, but what about like, who's going to tell me what to wear every day? Like, you know what I mean? Who's going to, who's going to tell me when I can't schedule my appointments when I can't, if I want to take a slow morning, if I don't like those types of things, yeah. you can't put prices on those. Right. Yeah. And then the flexibility, like because honestly i'm old over going back to um to get get a job like yeah. i could absolutely do it and, and there's a lot of comfort in there and i respect i respect people now that i've done this full time like i can totally understand and respect someone who doesn't want to do this yeah. as well right <laughs> you know it, it's not for everybody yeah not everybody's gonna win um but um yeah I, i've considered it and purely for the monetary reasons yeah. and and maybe like the challenge of it in a different way 
um, because MK1, I can I can just have an operator keep running my ads and it, it's gonna live, you know. Like, yeah. I can still do like keep all the same goals there with doing the other thing, but um, there's just I, I I've while I've like dove a little bit and tried to consider. There's just like always a little thorn that like keeps me away. Like, ah, yeah. oh, I don't know if I believe in this company. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't want to be in just that role or whatever it is. Yeah. You know? It's like you keep saying that, but at the end of the day, it's like, man, you're, you're, you're probably built to be an entrepreneur. And that's at, at the end of the day, it's like, I can't go back. Like, that's just what yeah. it is. Yeah. And then like having been like cut, like I'm saying, and for no reason either, like purely it was a budgetary thing. Um, I just seeing how cutthroat that can be like that definitely left a taste of like, I can't have another human responsible for mm-hmm. me, you know? Yeah. That's it's just crazy. as risky. Yeah. You hear it all the time now. So many people getting laid off, everything like that. It's like, what's the difference? At yeah. least now I know I can, I have, or you have like at least clarity into the future of like, you know, and then for you, it's like, cool. If I feel like it's getting a little slim, I hustle harder. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Right, right, right. And that's that's where my head is. It's like, hold on. I can go get this cushy job and be chill and scale my business. Or I can uh, throw more on the business and do other things. Like, there's ways to increase yeah. revenue in e-commerce. Yeah. Um, and I guess I'll just spit some of that real quick. I mean, increase your average order value. Yeah. Right? Optimize your email list. Yeah. Right? Get those open rates up. Get those clicks higher. Start sending offers here and there. You'll get sales. That's yeah. the most powerful, um, I, I'd say, marketing tool for an yeah. e-commerce business is email. And not just I'd say, like numbers say this. Yeah. Um, so there, there's definitely little nuggets that, that you can basically, or levers to pull yeah. to get yourself where you need to go. And that's why I'm not fearful or, you know, stressed. A hundred percent. So tell me a little bit about like the product development part of it. Let's, let's dial back a little oh, bit because okay. I definitely want to get into that tactical stuff, but like the product development, that sounds like a lot of fun. And then it also kind of sounds kind of expensive. So I, I want to hear about what your experience was with that. It, it's hell, bro. It's like such <laughs> hell. Um, this is actually going to be a little fun subject because like I have so much insight and I'll say this, like, because of what I went through, like, I'm not fearful of anybody getting in the business. Mm. Like, like there's all these new brands that pop up. Yeah. And my first thought is, like, good luck, yeah. you know, because it's rough. But um, how that worked out, man, basically, like I said, MK1, it was, like, one day to the next. And I made my logo, and I said, okay, I'm going. Um, And I went and found, and I went on Alibaba, and I found a, a boxing glove manufacturer mm. and or many i found many actually i'm not just one many uh pakistani chinese indian all kinds of stuff um and then yeah i spent and mk1 took all my money at the time <laughs> like i was doing all right it's like that <laughs> but but yeah when you're when you're like mid-20s living living crazy and paying rent you got a car you got you yeah. know all this any of my what would have been like a I had like a home fund, a savings, whatever, I threw on the business at that point, right? Yeah. Um, so I just sampled, man. I just got all kinds of gloves from all different places, and um, some stuff never showed up. Mm. Some stuff showed up and looked like, you know, you bought something red and it came blue, and you're like, <laughs> what? Other stuff, um, just basically, it came in, it looked the part, you put it on, and you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Um, so... Just a lot of problems, whether it was just not coming, terrible quality, uh, terrible fit, like just completely just bad. It was I got the whole range, but I ended up finding this Chinese manufacturer who's really professional, and they do um, a lot of things, and they did it to a level, like mm. to like a level of I don't want to say mediocre, but they did very good, yeah. very good, uh, or good I'll say, and I guess having tried all the quote unquote crap and I had something that I was like, okay, this is good enough. And that's literally how I went to market. I went to market with something good enough. Mm. Um, I, I knew it wasn't what I wanted long term, but it was good enough for me to put a logo on and start business. So I said, fuck it, I'm gonna go there. Yeah. And I did that. And basically what ended up happening is I took that to market to pictures, you know, started marketing my business and got going. And that's how I found my current like manufacturer. The leading one is they found me not because I went out and seeked them, 
right? Because it's hard to find these people. Yeah. Um, they found my Instagram, mm. and they hit me with a DM. Mm. And we get those every day, by the way, of like, oh, we'll make you this, we'll make you that. Um, but they sent pictures, and then they, were, they weren't the only one either. Yeah. We, we've still, I kept burning money on more and more and more and more. But they sent pictures, they sent a, a sample, and I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. Like, you know, it made some changes and stuff, but like, I can work with this person. Yeah. Um. So that's how that happened, man. It was just like started with good enough, went to market. The market found me in a sense, mm. and I just kept going because I knew what the product was that I didn't want to live with that forever. Yeah. Um. But then it got to where I'm at, where it's like I got something that I could work with, and then I worked with them to refine it. Mm. That took like a year, uh, maybe a year and a half, actually. A year and a half. Yeah. yeah the, like the select boxing glove. Yeah. The lace up. Um, the best, I, by the way. Yeah. I'd say top five in the world for anybody. <laughs> like, I love it. Come I tell me different. Yeah. You know? I love it, honestly. I like them better than my Cletos. I love them better than what else have I like rivals that I've worn. I, I love them. Yeah. And you can feel it on the other side, which is great. There's so much responsiveness. I love what you said. I'm going to interrupt you. I love what you said. You started on good enough. Yeah. Man. That like that's probably like I I could feel that vibe almost because there's something about starting on on good enough and we were going back and forth on on threads what's the best advice you ever got don't let you know I think I said something to the effect of like don't let a lack of knowledge be your barrier to success type of yeah, thing right. it's like you didn't know what else was out there mm -hmm. you didn't let you know you didn't let perfection that that illustrious like per idea of perfection stop you how important is it for you like to now looking back that you got started on good enough, how important would you say that is? Oh, it's usually important. I think um, the fact that like I was one day to the next just wanting to start, yeah. I forced it, you know, but that was a good thing. And I went with good enough because it was, you know, out of the lot, so to speak, that was what I had. Yeah. And I just wanted to go. Um, so I, I think it's hugely important because if I didn't like, if I would, because I am a perfectionist, you know, I want to do things right. I knew what I was, especially with a boxing glove, having trained and stuff. Like, I wanted to put a certain level of thing out. Yeah. And I didn't have access to it, but I just wanted to go. So, I'd say, man, just start. That, you, that, that's one of my biggest, like, um, what do you call, like, advice to anybody who wants to, like, be an entrepreneur or whatever. Just just go. A hundred percent. Two There's letters. There's no time. Yeah. There's no time yeah. for anything else. You know yeah. what I mean? It's the, And, like, you start doing the cost on your life. I'm like, yeah, so every day I decide to, like, think twice about it, it costs me that much money cost me this opportunity mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. because i thought about it too much which i mean you got to balance that uh over time but you know you definitely just got to start i'm sure like your logo was something similar i love your logo but it's like something similar where it's like okay well it's not like this is good enough let's go my first e your first email blast this is good enough let's go you know what i mean oh yeah and, and dude i'll say this like even to this day like there's there's newsletters i'm not like all geeked out about <laughs> like, just do it bro yeah no one's, you know, I, I learned, um, one of my good buddies, Jay, he's like really sharp marketer. Um, he's just like, bro, nobody cares. You'll be all <laughs> right? right. You know, you'll be all right. It, it's one, it's 24 hours, you mm -hmm. know, next week, send something new. Don't worry about it. A hundred percent. Fucking go. As long as you're not completely like taking a crap on your stuff, like you're, yeah. you're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be fine. I love that, man. Um, so you find this, you find your new manufacturer, uh, and like, what was the response? Let's hang on good enough for a little bit. What was the response from that first round of gloves that you that you put out into the world? Man, I'll be honest. Like when when I started, I really didn't know shit. Like I knew a lot about e-commerce, mm -hmm. but the business side, I wasn't really rounded out with. So I I don't even think I really made sales. It was more like that first glove was kind of like a front. It was mm -hmm. like the front of a business. Right? <laughs> Got it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I didn't really. Of course, I learned a lot over the time, but um, I would say the the big learnings came after yeah. when I when I started running with something I wanted. Mm. Um, but again, to the the good enough point, like that's what like got everything going. So yeah. while that's the story and how it worked for me, um, I think the takeaways just go, man. Yeah, just go good enough. So tell me a little bit about like your that initial marketing strategy and even what you're doing now from what I'm looking at, you know, as, as a fellow marketer and entrepreneur myself, I'm like, all right, this is like, you're really focused on for one, um, 
social proof, like your, your emails about the, uh, your emails about getting a review in are really important. That's something that's being highlighted quite a bit. And then you give a sick discount with that too, which you don't, what's great is you don't say like, Hey, leave us a review and we'll give you 20%. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a surprise at the end. So everything's super authentic. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I'm interested to know, like, how did you get, how did you start getting the name out there for MK1? Okay. And, and, and I guess this goes with the, just going and just starting. But like when I went with good enough, man, it was, it was guerrilla style. And this mm. is, I think what people aren't willing to do these days. But man, I just made the Instagram. I started posting pictures. Mm -hmm. I went, I started following, unfollowing, liking mm -hmm. things, commenting on boxing related stuff. Like it was a grind. I remember building that thing to a thousand and like, geez, man, like I give myself a lot of credit because you know how hard it is to build. Yeah. It's, you're not a person, you're a brand, yeah. you know, and building yourself up to it. You don't even have, when you start at a hundred or not even, when you start at zero, because that's where it was. Yeah. Going to a thousand and doing it like the hard way. I put in a lot of work, man. Like, yeah. so that, that was the style. It was just, again, like I'll say not know what I was doing, but it was, it was the right actions. Right. Yeah. Cause I was marketing, Yeah. but it, it wasn't like very sexy because it was like follow on follow, like comment, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the strategy was just find any, any way to just get myself seen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, it was a long grind and, and, I think I think I ran that a little longer than I should. Yeah. Looking back, but that that was just it, man. Just, what about like showing up to gyms, like things like that? Is that something that you were doing as well? No, um, I, for like the first year and a half, I didn't. Now, how that ha happened, like with the gyms and stuff, because um, I wanted to be DTC to start. That's mm -hmm. what I thought, right? Mm -hmm. and that's where I came from. I'm, I'm an e-commerce guy, so I was like, "Fuck, this is what I'm gonna do." Um, but one of my cousins connected me with with some with an acquaintance of his, his name's Rob. Shout out to Rob because Rob actually came by he, like my cousin told him about me and what I was doing. So Rob came by and he like he was he's a boxing coach. Um who's like super connected with Sinisa super bad. You yeah. know she is. Um but um he came by, he checked out my stuff. He's like, oh this is really cool bro. He's like I'm I'm going to the gym. There's a sparring day. You should just come by. And uh, he is literally the person who got me to a sparring day. And then there I met a ton of boxers, ton of coaches, mm. and it kind of just splintered out from there. Um, and that's where, like, that strategy of, like, going out to the gym started mm. and getting to know people. And it was all basically through that one little connection that invited me somewhere, and then it just turned into whatever yeah. it is now. But I've met a lot of cool people uh, in that day, like, Pablo at Shark Sports, who, if you don't know Shark Sports or you don't know Pablo, this guy, he builds all the rings mm. in, in Southern California mm. for pro bouts. He's done over 200 championship fights on his rings. Wow. Um, he works with Golden Boy. He's like, he's the man. You know, these people are real cool and, and real solid. And uh, boxing is actually a really small community, uh, community yeah, yeah. like in the, um, you know, in the area. Yeah. Uh, so people know people. And there's a lot of good people. And like with anything else, there's a lot of bad people, yeah. a, lot, a lot of snakes and stuff. Yeah. So be careful. Well, but, it's funny. Um, I was wearing, speaking of small, uh, small like it's a small community. I was wearing your gloves, and somebody else that my I go to American was wearing your gloves. They were wearing the pink ones. I was super jealous. And uh, every time I go on, they're sold out. I'm like, dang it, <laughs> that and the periwinkle. And uh, periwinkle. yeah, yeah. And um, he's like, oh, do you know Chris? And I was like, no, I don't. But like. You know, I don't remember what the, what the guy's name was, but it's it's just tight. Like, okay, cool. Like he's he's around here. You know, I thought you were in L.A. Fullerton. You know, sometimes with the fifty five traffic, it feels like driving yeah, to LA, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, man. Like that's I mean, you're still you're still doing that stuff today, though. You just came back from Vegas. You know, networking a little bit too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, shout out my buddy Jam Jamie and uh, Andres Cortez. He was just the co main and. Um, on an ESPN Plus like fight card, and uh, they're in Vegas, and it was a title eliminator, so it was a big fight for him. Mm -hmm. um, I'd met him, uh, I forget, definitely this year, but I forget exactly what month, because I go to Vegas quite often. Yep. Um, but yeah, just getting connected with boxers, getting connected with coaches, getting connected mm -hmm. with people on the commission, uh, managers are huge too. Um, and honestly, just uh, I try to do well by all these people, and I try to do well by the sport. Yeah. So just just being present, and um, honestly, 
like just to stick on the subject of like the marketing and going out to the gyms when I first started like when when uh when Rob introduced me to that first like sparring day and I spent a lot of time going around like actually like some t- you know I, I didn't go with intent to sell but I always had stuff on me yeah um I kind of moved away from that I feel like I lose my power I look like kind of a weirdo you know um, so I'm not doing any of that anymore. Mm. I'm just the guy in the gym. Yeah. And like, oh, this is what Chris does. Oh, that's that guy. Right. Um, so yeah, it's it's a different uh, it's a different frame that I come from at this point. It's more just like, for lack of a better way to say, I'm just like a character in the game, you know. Yeah. Um, and I just try and get to know people and show them I do well, wish them well, and um, just move forward like that. Yeah. Whatever comes of it, comes of it. But I don't I don't want anything from anybody, and um, I'm going to stay in my corner and keep doing my thing. Yeah. Uh, you aren't big on influencer marketing. <laughs> but I was influenced to buy your to buy your gloves. So, I, like, I think, I don't know if he's a friend of yours or whatever the case may be, but a friend of mine, Tate and uh, the Butcher Beltran, yeah. put your gloves up. Uh, and I was like, all right, like, let's check it out. You know what I mean? I trained with him one time. He seemed like a cool dude. Obviously knows, knows what he's talking about. Pro fighter, undefeated, 9-0. Love you, Tayden. Yeah, uh, shout out you, Tayden. Yeah, man. And I was just like, dang it. And I got the 16s and my first, and I just came off my Cletus because, man, those things were like a year old. And I swear, all the sweat never came out of the Cletus. Oh, man, yeah. I bought them as 16s. They probably left at 24s. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, my first day sparring with them. For one, you don't have to break them in, yeah. which was amazing. And then, um, and then they felt. This is why I say, like, you know, the Cletus as like they felt lighter. It felt good. Like everything felt really good about it. But, anyways, you're not huge on that uh, on influencer marketing. It doesn't seem that way, anyways. But a couple people have gotten your gloves. What had? What's that mentality of like? Yeah, I'm not going to go the influencer route or anything like that. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I'm not big on it. I'm. So what I'd say, uh, at least in my experience, and I can't speak for everybody, but yeah. um, it's not a it's not a revenue generating activity. Mm. You know, I can send whoever. I mean, unless it's Canelo, that's a different level, right? But me giving the gloves to Xbox or X MMA guy, X whatever, like that's going to, I guess, influence his close circle people. Maybe give me a chance. Yep. Yeah. Um. And that's what I've kind of noticed, but that doesn't necessarily mean dollars immediately in the bank account or anything like that. That's why I'm not big on it. What I'm big on it for is like the positioning of it, right? Like, like shout out like Brutal Bosswick if you look at him on Instagram. Mm. Jake, he's a bare knuckler. He's been fighting his damn near whole life. I think he took his first pro bout at like 15 or 16 in London. He's a savage. Dang, dude. I'm like, man, I want to be associated with that guy. Mm. Um, so I think strategically, uh, definitely makes a lot of sense. Choose who. You want to work with from like a relationship standpoint, understand like it's not going to be, you know, you don't just drop something in someone's doorstep and then it's going to turn into something. I think I use it more for the positioning of it and uh, the association. Yeah. Um, and what I'll say is like, don't make it a priority when you're starting, because when you're starting, you you, you need to you make the bottom line, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. So. Don't make it a priority in the sense where you're just like giving game everywhere, you know, pick, you know, be strategic with it. Try and work with people, build a relationship and go that route. I think it's more suitable, um, at least from my experience. Yeah. yeah. And you're right now you're completely bootstrapped. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that's really smart. Uh, that I love your approach to it because for one, like info, like you're, that's not expensive or I mean, it's not a cheap piece of it's you know not, it's man. you're not doing t-shirts yeah. you know what i mean and so you have an expensive piece of equipment and you know, and uh so that's money out that's money out already yeah. and then you're not from what i see and it, and and forgive me if i'm saying you're not i'm not trying to put you in a in a box yeah. but I, I i've studied how you're marketing for at least a couple months now if not more um you're not heavily invested in like top of funnel uh top of funnel ad ads where there's a lot of waste there i get a lot of retargeting things like that there's a there's a lot of good um you know there's a lot of good engagement i think that you get on your on your instagram and then your email marketing is where it really 
comes out. And I loved watching you on threads, how you're interacting with people on threads. And then looking at Chris in my email marketing, I'm like, all right, cool. Like he, he's for real, but like I, there's, I love that you can kind of change the tone of what you're doing. You're definitely speaking like how you talk. I love that creative aspect of it, Yeah. but you know, it's, it's a, you're really great at storytelling in your emails. So I'd love to learn a little bit about like, what is your strategy to email marketing that you've mentioned? That's your hugest revenue driver. And you know, we, we preach that here at blue light as well. Um, so what has your, you know, what has your approach been to that? Um, yeah, no. And I think honestly, it, it, this applies to social media marketing and pretty much any form of marketing. Um, shout out Jamie on this one. Um, you just firstly, like my mentality, my, like, the number one thing I just want to be in your mind mm. like that. So what does that take? Just send a fucking email. Yeah. Just post an Instagram picture, just post a reel, whatever it is, just put, do something right now. That's the first layer right? I'm just there. Yeah. You know, so that boom, you check that box. Second layer, help people offer value. Um, and make it about them or at least share something. You know, Like not everybody's going to read everything or see everything, but on the off chance that boom, you do post that, that thread, you do post that Instagram or you do send that email and they do read it. Like make sure it's meaningful in some way. And you're not banging a cell every time. Yeah. You're just, nurturing in, in some capacity and it could look different for various different things um and then yeah consistency and just a lot of it yeah just a lot of it just keep going so three things man just first mentality just be there yeah second mentality offer value mm -hmm. and that can come in a variety of ways and then the third thing just keep doing it yeah so for like emails for example specifically you got to be sending and i'm not doing this right now and i'm, I'm actually gonna start um you got to send three to five a, a week yeah. As an e as an e commerce brand. Mm. Yeah. And um That's a big hack, by the way. That's yeah. Awesome. Huge hack. Huge hack. I mean, man, I got emails. I got it put it like actually every single email newsletter I've sent out has generated a sale. Nice. Every single one. Yeah. I, I can show you like the it's pretty cool to me. I show my girlfriend, for example, like I look at the, the, the campaigns, so you can see the histories, you can see the open rates, the click rates, all that stuff. And then you see the revenue generated and I'm like, holy shit, that was a $200 email. That's a $1,700 email. That's, fucking, yeah. you know, you're like, whoa, this is cool. Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah. And then I get responses on that too, man. <laughs> Imagine you're with your girlfriends like, oh, you want to go out to that restaurant? Let me send an email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I tell her. Like, <laughs> You know, but I don't send it with, with money. Line. I send like at least my newsletter, the newsletter. I send that with like, um, yeah, I do. I want to, I want I want to create value. I want to share what's going on and connect with people, you know? Yeah. I think that's powerful. Um, because the way I see it, like you, you're going to need a boxing glove. You're going to buy a boxing glove, you know, like I, I don't want to bang my customer list with fucking like bullshit about like. I don't know, just, you know. Where oh. it's like a sale every other day. Yeah. You've like, done a really good job. Man, we got, we we have some clients, and uh, this is no secret, every day there's a sale. Every month there's a no, sale. No, that's like, crazy. Whatever. You're, so, you're very strategic about how you do it, yeah. and it feels good every time you do it. it. Like, you actually have that feeling like, shoot, like, do I need another pair of gloves? Every time you like, put something <laughs> out. <laughs> you yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, I, I, you know what, and I kind of connect with you on threads, um, and then you see my newsletter, and it's interesting because I'll pop through the gym and people will be like, I'll be reading them newsletters, Chris. Like, what's the, you know? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. It's like, but, trust me, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what was I gonna say there? The uh, oh, not the newsletter, the the writing man. Mm -hmm. I think um, writing. And I don't know where, what real or what I read, where YouTube short, YouTube video, but someone, and I wish I can give some credit, but just someone said like, writing is the closest thing to thinking. Mm. And then I just like, I really fucked with that. I'm like, shit, I think I want to, I, I need to write more. Like, cause this is like the closest thing in my mind. And I, yeah. and, and I think that's powerful. Yeah. So, and I've, and based on what I've experienced via email and then what I'm kind of seeing on threads is like. There's definitely something to be said about this, and I enjoy it. It's like one of the things, like two of the, the things that I've kind of picked up over the last, like we'll say 12 months, like as hobbies or things I study more, for sure marketing. Yeah. Um, and man, I wish I picked that up sooner. Yeah. Um, and then uh, writing. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's awesome. So if I were to dig under your Facebook ads account right now, what does your structure look like in terms of like top of funnel, mid funnel retargeting, so on and so forth? Oh, it's, it's super simple, man. And I've tested, um, a lot and burned a lot of money. Be careful with, uh, marketing, but on Facebook, it's really just two things I run. Um, and I'm doing a test right now. So I'll, I'll tell you what, what worked for me and got me like a three to one return on that spend. Um, for me, what got me three to one as an e-commerce brand was I did a, a brand campaign search, mm-hmm. just text base. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Google search gram, gram campaign, yeah. brand campaign that picked up all like MK1 boxing gloves, MK1 boxing and led them to my site. So I'm, I'm just making sure I'm bidding on my own brand. Mm. So that way the C, like the cost per clicks are low and nobody else can take them from me. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of sucks, but you got to pay for your own, your own brand terms. Then I have a performance max campaign where I have the the catalog um, connected, and I have just a shitload of headlines, a shitload of descriptions, like everything it asks for. They're very simple to set up. Yeah. So two two campaigns, one brand search, and one performance max. Yeah. And that uh, consistently over four months, like we'll say January to April, before I started like fucking shit up and like <laughs> testing stuff. Um, that got me three to one. It's very simple. Yeah. Very simple for e-commerce. Yeah. yeah. What about on your Facebook account? Facebook also very simple. What well, was winning and, until I screwed it with, via testing. Yeah. Um, and I'll get into that, but just one, um, advantage plus shopping campaign mm. and just catalogs in there, set a couple ads and just let it roll. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's it. That's, that's very so, consistent with what we're seeing as well. Three, three total campaigns, right? The yeah. search performance max on google and then one on the uh, facebook on your facebook uh campaigns is it primarily retargeting uh well the uh, advantage plus shopping campaigns does a little both yeah yeah yeah. that's right it'll go out and acquire uh customers it'll Mm -hmm. it'll retarget to website visitors it'll it's a blended thing and i don't have control so i don't know what the split is yeah um and i've tried to i i have i've tested breaking them out um which I think the results were kind of like inclusive. So I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Just roll with that. But I do get it. I mean, I get retargeted all the time for my damn self. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Well, I'm getting them too. So it's <laughs> it's still like, man, should I get the, should I get those bag mitts? Do I, I don't even need a mouth guard, but that <laughs> one's in bright green. I want that one. Yeah. Um, that's super consistent with what we see with a lot of the brands that we're working with and a lot of other, um, I, I, by the way, I'm just saying this because I love the fact that you're learning on all this stuff on your own, yeah. you know, and, uh, and testing all this stuff on your own, because again, like to the, to the listener who's starting their own brand, like you like, just take some time to learn a little bit, test, maybe mess, mess around. You're going to lose a little bit of money, but at least if you can understand how a certain platform works, when, if you do decide to hire somebody out, you're not getting like you know, you're not getting bamboozled, like I said, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And that goes back to what we said earlier about just kind of dabbling or learning a little bit. Um, and I'm going all in on that because, and the reason I did that with the ads, I, I, I looked for some agencies mm-hmm. right? and I looked for, I, I, I interviewed a couple actually. And these guys, like you, you see whatever they, they post in terms of like their, their ads. Cause I see them and I'm, I see what they're talking about. I read their copy. Yeah. But when I'm in the meeting with them, they want to charge me X amount and then they can't even guarantee me a three return yeah. on ad spend or like, well, yeah, that would be the goal. Like, uh, but I, you know, there's no guarantees here. I'm like, what are you that mad or not? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like that's the kind of person I'm at. Like yeah. you're going to charge me for this. Can you do that? Well, dude, with $175 AOV, they should be able to get you a three X for sure. That's you know ridiculous. what I mean? It's if you were a protein bar selling for four ninety nine, then no, you're never getting there. Right, by the way, right. but it's like for one hundred and seventy five bucks, you should be able to get there. I th- my our ad buyer right now, like quick, like I never drop blue light here, by the way. But Maggie's like killing it right now. I just went through her account; she's getting seven x return on on one of our accounts. It's but it's cool. a two hundred dollar AOV, right? Mm-hmm. So like you have a high AOV, so. Um, or I, I can only imagine because your gloves are, you know, your gloves are properly priced, but they're not like forty dollars gloves. Yeah, right. You should be able to get that. So, and you're yeah. finding success on yourself. So, you know. Yeah, and honestly, um, and this is, I think this is huge about ads as well. Um, and this is what I learned via my testing, by the way, and maybe it can help you. But you got to understand your industry. Mm-hmm. Like, not everybody can get a ten x. Not yeah. everybody can get a seven. For me. 
now that I really think about it, a three is very good. And, yeah. And the reason is because you don't just go on Google and type boxing glove and buy it. This is a very educated market. They go, they click one, they read, they go to the other one, they read, maybe yeah. tr- look at 10 and then yeah. make a purchase. Like I've, I've never met anybody that's just like goes on Google types yeah. boxing glove and like, Oh, this is the one. Like, yeah. You it's know. like there's a couple different demographics to this, I feel like. There's the one where it's like they know winning, they know Cleto, that's what they're getting. Yeah. They're already sold. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Yeah. Or and you know, maybe there's a couple other brands. But even like Grant, like that's kind of like more of a hardcore boxer, I feel like, if you're gonna buy a Grant glove type of thing. Yeah. Um, but uh maybe you'll get a rival. But then outside of that, it's like Maybe you'll go to like Adidas because you know it. Maybe because you'll go to Everlast because you love it. But Amazon now for boxing gloves, for boxing gloves specifically, and boxing equipment, headgear, you're going to look at all of the reviews. You're going to read, you know, how does this respond, right? I'm sure that's been your experience. Yeah, yeah. And we're growing on Amazon. I got I got all the stuff listed on there. It's not a focus. I, the reason is because I want to own my customer relationship, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know? So I have it there to capture like those ready customers, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but my focus is DTC, and I think that's where the power is. You yeah. Know? Um, but the yeah the the social proof aspect is huge. I think again, my particular industry, people do their research. It's yeah. not like um, the 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 things that get ten ROI in e-commerce and seven and whatever. Those those are very like niche things, like dog vitamin like, yeah like, you know, you're right you know like stuff like that where it's very in high intent you just run it on google and people buy it yeah boxing gloves are high intent because i want boxing gloves but once i see all the listings now my intent's all over the place yeah. and i gotta make a choice yeah so for me to think i was gonna go get seven and ten now that i really think about it i'm crazy bro yeah it's crazy because there's still some education. I have some questions about your target demo and what you think about it because you know when i started too like i was kind of looking for it wasn't about a brand because I was like, oh, how different can a boxing glove really be? So I think the first ones I got were like sand bowls for like 40 bucks. Yeah, sounds yeah, about right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like I think I got – those are like from back then too, like yeah. those mitts. Uh, those are the first ones I got because I had no idea what I was getting myself into. So there's a there's a big, big like education factor I think to what you're dealing with. But what I'm curious about is, you know, I kind of mentioned – you know, on one end, there's the there's the person that's going to get like winnings and like whatever. Then you have the complete other end where I don't know anything. I'm just going to go on Amazon, get Sandbull. Yeah. And, but I would say, I don't know. This is an assumption you know better than I do. Would you say that a, a vast majority of your customer is not only like they're savvy because they know what they want in boxing because you're like for boxers or, or, you know, or for fighters. Yeah. But also like, I don't know, a lot of, I feel like a lot of those real like, like hardcore boxers, pros, amateurs, semi-pros, they don't have a lot of disposable income to just like be like, oh, sure, I'll just buy like $200 pair of gloves. Like, what are your thoughts on that? The, uh, I guess let me clarify on on what the, um, like the, the target demographic? Yeah, yeah. And like my general thoughts on, on their... Who yours is right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who's my target? Okay, so from a from a brand standpoint, I, w- I want the fighters. I want the grinders. Mm. I want the guys that show up in the fucking gym and do the work and don't talk. Mm. The guys, when it comes to the pros and the amateurs, they show up on weight. They fucking just come to fight. Yeah. They're the real ones. Yeah. Basically. Like, if I could just, two words, real ones. Yeah. Right? Um, now, from, and that's like from a brand standpoint. Now, from like a target demo and all my marketing and stuff, the money's in the other side. The money's in I, I, the people I need to educate what the, the people that don't know exactly what size to buy mm-hmm. the people that um you know they bought some shit that doesn't feel right and this com- not comfortable that so that um so i think how i'm how i'm approaching it is i'm i'm building a brand for i guess my my old self that i, I heard that from virgil abloh like mm. you know build, do something your 17 year old self would and i'm really living that like, yeah because 17 year old chris would appreciate what the hell i got going on yeah like, you know um and that's from the brand standpoint, but from like the marketing and all the other stuff and like what I want to add and like all the extra layers that I still need to do. Um, it's for the, an educated person. Yeah. Um, uh, because I think the education can only lead to just a better relationship with them. Hopefully a love for the, th- the game and you can turn into a dog. You can turn into a real one. You know, you don't, yeah. no one comes out the womb like that. You know, <laughs> Right. This is, that's what MK one's about, man. Like the, I started with the name Mark one. Mm hmm. And the reason, and, and it was overnight too, 
I had watched fucking Iron Man like two nice. days before that game. Yes. <laughs> and and then you know about Iron Man, his first suit was called the Mark One body yeah. armor. And then the whole essence of Iron Man is his next suit and his next suit, and they're all better and badder yeah. and more badass shit. So it's just the concept of evolving and growing and just basically pushing a line. Yeah. Um, and then I turned it to MK1 because of like trademark reasons, but I like MK1 better now. Yeah. So it's a code. I think I, I shared a newsletter on that. MK1's a code. It's not a name. It's a code. Mm. I'm a tech guy. You know? Yeah. So MK1, what's it mean? Kind of everything I just yeah. outlined. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, man. And it's, I love how you think about brand building and marketing. They're not necessarily the, they're not necessarily in the same bucket. No. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I'm not. You know, I don't know everything about that stuff, right? The beauty, and this is why I'm so confident with the e-commerce and software and all that, is text binary, bro. Mm. It's like a light. It's on or it's off. You win or you lose. Green, blue. The script worked. It didn't. Shit like that, you know? Like a computer doesn't lie. You run a fucking command, it's going to execute said command. Yeah. There's no, like, that's why I'm so, like, like, quick with it when it comes to the tech stuff yeah. you can't fuck with me because i can prove it right <laughs> now the brand and the marketing that's why i have fun with it because it's like there there's thought leaders on this too and they're really great and those are the people like they inspire me i i do fuck with the artistic side of things like yeah. a lot you yeah. know so that's where i have a lot of fun and i don't know it's like a, a fun place for me to live like i feel like a killer when it comes to the tech stuff and you know all that side but like there's this whole other end like what you're saying with the marketing and the brand is like it's, it's a lot of art yeah, and some science, of course, right? Because you can test and you yeah. can see how things respond and whatever. But is, there's definitely like a level of, I can't control it. I can't like, I just got to do and see and hope it evolves. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. Well, from one guy's point of view, like I think you're doing a fantastic job and that you definitely get the feeling like I would say that a lot of your brand building is happening in your email right now. And I definitely get the feeling that it's for the grinder and it's inspiring. It's, it's cool. Yeah. And just getting to know you a little bit better I've, over the last couple of weeks, watching your thing on threads, it's like, you're about it. You know what I mean? And, and I love that. And I love that you're, you put your, you know, you put your name on your brand, like that whole thing. Like it's, it's pretty sick. Not a lot of people are doing it the way that you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I self assess a lot, right? Mm. Like I'm, 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 I'm hard, like people I care about and stuff. Like I'm a hard dude and I, I have ADHD and I got diagnosed very later in like 28, dude. Yeah. Um, so to a lot of people actually, and I guess going back to the high school thing, a lot of people would say I'm a dick <laughs> a lot. And, um, even I would have, I I'd agree. But the reason now that I understand is because I'm a direct dude. Like yeah. my mind, it, it, I can't sit and listen to you say something. I'm just going to say what I, you know, like, yeah, it's in, I don't want to use it as a crutch, but I think that has a lot to do with why people viewed me a certain way. Yeah. Um, and why I can come off a certain way to certain people, but I'm not, you know, I'm a, I'm a nice guy. Yeah. You know, once you, you know, I may, I may, may not look nice. I may not sound nice, yeah. but trust me, man, I have a good, I'm a good person. I have good intent. Like yeah. I care about you and stuff like that. That's very um, obvious. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Well, it's Orange County. People aren't used to direct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's an LA thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know, yeah. I, Depending I, on the part of LA, you know what I mean? But yeah. no, I feel that. So man, you've done such an incredible job. I love learning about your journey. Can you tell me a little bit, uh, you know, as we're starting to wrap, can you tell me about like what the next steps are for MK one? What's the next goal in your mind? Um, just keep just fucking just run it. Just, yeah. Just keep going, man. Yeah. There's, there's, I think the goal I'm finding a lot of um, like pleasure in the grind of just the daily, like the journey of it. Yeah. Um, and I, I have big goals. And to me, like I don't have a specific vision for MK1 like on the top end. Mm. I have a vision for what I want it to be, but I it, it's not monetary. It never has been. I actually, like, I guess just to say that, I didn't start this company to make money. Yeah. Like I started because I went on Google and I thought it was shit and I thought I could do better. Yeah. You know? Um, so just the overall goal is keep scaling, keep learning, uh, keep building the brand and, um, just rinse and repeat. We got a machine going and just keep the machine rolling, yeah. you know, who, who do you want to see your gloves on? <laughs> I mean, I've had some pretty big names already. Um, I, I'll say, man, I, I want, I want to see my gloves on whoever wants them. Mm. I'm, I'm a fan of nobody, man. You know? Nice. 
I don't, I don't, at this point, I don't care for De La Hoya, Canelo, Tyson. Like, all respect. I love what you do. I love what you I represent. You inspire me. But um, I don't quite need you. <laughs> Oof, I love that, man. <laughs> Look, if uh, first of all, thank you so much for sharing your story, your insights, and like really digging under the hood as to your strategies on building an e-commerce brand uh, or a D2C brand, and especially one that like, you know, for me personally, I, like I'm a huge fan of. It's cool to meet somebody that has that marketing side, that entrepreneur side, and also loves boxing. There's like a few people I feel like, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean. So yeah. it, it's pretty tight. If somebody wants to connect with you, how can they find you? Uh, yeah, man, Wolf of Boxing on Instagram, Wolf of Boxing on Threads, mk1boxing.com. Shoot an email or get on the chat. They'll they'll refer it to me. Um, and yeah, I mean that that's. That's where it's at, man. I love that. Uh, to the listener and the viewer, thank you so much for your time and attention. If you love the episode, we would dig a five-star review. If you didn't like it that much, feel free to stick it to us, but subscribe anyway because we're going to have a ton of incredible people just like Chris Espinoza back on the show. Thanks again, man. Yeah, thanks, Mikhail. Thanks, Blue Light.